I'm Russell Beard in Uganda, where a traditional product is receiving a forest-friendly facelift. In Uganda, over 90% of the population still cook on open fires and rely on burning charcoal and wood for fuel. In the last 20 years alone, this has contributed to almost a third of their trees being cut down. In order to meet demand, unregulated charcoal manufacturers are cutting into forests so fast that at current rates of deforestation, by 2050, there'll be no trees left. I'm Russell Beard in Uganda, where an innovative cooking product promises to reduce deforestation and cut down on harmful emissions. This is Katwe in Kampala. Katwe is an informal housing area in the division of Makindye, we're here to visit local stove manufacturers, Yuga Stove. This is it, yeah. Thanks, Ezzy. Welcome. Okay, so this sounds like the place. We're looking for Raymond Chesi. She's the CEO, and hopefully she's expecting us. Hi, Rima. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Hello, nice meeting you. Nice to meet you too. Well, it looks like business is booming here. Yeah, business is booming uh, because in Uganda, basically, uh, for cooking, it's majorly firewood and charcoal. And this is what people need. So you're talking about a stove that uses charcoal, that uses wood? Yeah, but at a reduced percentage. Uh, with Yuga stove, charcoal stove, uh, it saves almost 50%. Wow. Compared if you're using a metallic stove. Because in Uganda we don't have any other option. Fine, there is electricity, gas, but the cheapest bin of cooking is charcoal. Yeah. But you're saying that even though this still uses charcoal, it's it's a saving. There yes. are savings here. Yeah. So can you show us around? Yeah. Can you get a sense of That's your okay. of your business? That's okay. Yuga stove employs over 150 staff. Using locally available materials and simple assembly techniques, current production is around 10,000 units per month. <laughs> there's a lot of stoves here. I know. Uh, Everywhere I look, there's stoves. Yeah. This is where we do the granite. You yeah, can wow. see there. So that's the outside bit. Yeah, the outside okay. bit. Uh, it's only using hammers. I, I know, I kind yeah. of gather that. There's a lot of hammering. Oh, oh like, man. Yeah. When you go to bed at night, can you just hear this in your dreams? Yeah. Definitely, I do. Yeah. yeah. It's the music of business, though. I know. Yes. Okay. A traditional clay stove lasts just six to eight weeks, but these stoves can last up to five years longer thanks to this metal outer casing. This is the cladding, then? Yes. Okay, I mean, at this stage, what we're looking at here is pretty much, this would be a kind of a standard stove. It doesn't look much different than just a, a kind of tin bucket with a hole in it, so... There is another stage which is insulating. The real innovation is the combination of the strength of a conventional metal stove with the insulating properties of a clay liner. This is where they do the insulation. It's a bit quieter, thankfully. Yeah. I can hear what you're saying now. This is Naiga. Um, Naiga. I'm not so... Hi. Um, what you see here is mica, some bit of clay, water, and cement. OK. Yeah, so what... I can see that inside Naiga is making a kind of inner sleeve there. This is really the secret of the stove. It's really that insulation. Yeah. yeah. You've got very good aim there. I can see that this is very much an acquired skill. Yeah. I, would, I, I mean, I would love to give you a hand. Uh, on this? Yeah, I, I mean, I think I could give no, it a hand. No, I've got a better one for you. Okay. okay. All right. Yeah. Wow, Rima. Where have you brought me? It looks like a cheese cellar. Yeah, this it looks is... like Stilton cheese, doesn't it? This is oh, sorry. Geez. 
this is where we dry our liners from. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Hello. Hi. <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm Russell. What's going on? No, we are trying to mold the liner which they put in it. A white stove. Okay, yeah. Jared, I'm in your hands. Yeah. Tell me how I can help. Okay. I get this ash, I put into this thing. Okay. Then I get the clay. Okay. An important part of Yuga Stove's business model is the employment of local people. Everything is made on site by hand, but the training can be a messy business. Thank you, Rima. All right, let's do it. I'll come round to you, shall I? I was taking notes. Okay, so you dust it off a little bit in here. Okay. Oh yeah, that feels good. It's really good, man. It feels like making mud pies when you're a kid, remember? Not much effort. The thermal properties of this clay liner enable it to absorb and retain heat, which means a little charcoal can go a long way. Yeah, I get it, I get it, I get it. Less charcoal usage means less emissions and less trees cut down. And so, Jared, do you live around here? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're interested in these stoves because there's a positive environmental effect of using these stoves. Can I ask, is that important for you? That you're working on something which is good for the environment? When we use this stove, our type of stove, we save the charcoal. Whereby when you are saving the charcoal, trees are saved in the environment. We are eliminating Going in desertification, cutting down trees, the deforestation, we are reducing those effects. And uh, is that important to you, or, or is it just a job, just like any any it's job? It's important to me. It's important. It's important to me to care about my environment. Yeah. Okay. I think we're nearly um, okay, ready. Hey. Yeah, you've done it. Though the environmental benefits from a single stove may be modest, thanks to Yuga Stove's high productivity, the potential savings soon stack up. This is where that cone is. Yeah, I can smell it. There's some yeah. in there now. There are about 400 in there. 400? Yeah. Wow. So how long will it take? Uh, something like uh, eight hours. Okay, so we'll leave them to cook? Yeah. It's, um, and with a new kiln five times the size on the way, Rayma and her team are ramping up supply to meet demand. Do you think that people are thinking about the tree cutting? Yes. Or is it just a, a, a financial thing for these people? No, it's not. The financial thing issue cannot be eliminated out. But definitely now people are aware of the global women. When people call in, they always want to get that exact message about the stove. They're like, does this stove serve what percentage? So it's not only that someone want to buy, but does it, does it serve charcoal? Definitely, if you think, you think of that, it means he's concerned about environment, though there is saving on the money, but definitely you, you, you would get it that this person is concerned with the environment. And I mean, what's interesting as well, I guess, is if people are phoning up to say, does this really save charcoal? Mm. It doesn't really matter if they're just saying, does it save charcoal because I'm going to spend less money on charcoal? Mm. If, if that's their only motivation, does that matter? Uh, Are you really trying to get the message out there? That's what I mean. Yeah, people know and they know the message. They now aware of the impact if trees are cut. It, in Uganda, like, it's now everywhere. Um, global warming is everywhere. People are now educated about the climate change and we always have this package in our awareness campaign. So it's not just about selling stoves for no. you? Really? Yeah. You're, you're... Business is business, yes. We are a private company, but at the end of the day, we, are, we have to think about the environment. Environmentally aware or not, with more than a third of the population living on less than $1.25 a day, the true cost of an efficient cook stove is just too much for most people, including materials and manpower. It would be five times that of a normal one. That's where this guy comes in. I've come to the local market to meet John Gwillem of Impact Carbon, a Californian-based non-profit. They're using a smart model to help bring these stoves back within reach. 
Aha, okay. So this is it. This is where we're mostly cooking. Oh, look at this. What is she cooking there, man? That's matoke. Wow. So it looks like seaweed. Yeah, those are the banana leaves. Okay. They wrap it in the banana leaves before they steam it. You're going to see her unwrapping one right now. Okay. It's like a plantain okay. uh, that you take off when it's very green and still hard in the uh, steam it. And then you mash it afterwards. It takes a lot of time and a lot of charcoal and a lot of energy. Well, is that not very hot? <laughs> it's very hot. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. It's just straight in there, straight into the pot, steaming <laughs> vegetables. So this is, I mean, it's a perfect illustration, isn't it? Isn't yeah. It? We've got like the, the stove, the traditional food. We've got charcoal everywhere we look. It's charcoal getting piled onto these massive stoves. But you feel that heat. Yeah. And yeah, all yeah. that heat is the heat loss from the stove. Yeah. So everything that you see around here is an inefficient stove. You have no type of liner in there. And because of that, you're just getting all of this heat loss. Yeah, no, I can, I can feel it. I mean, yeah, I mean legs are burning, and we just stood next to them all. But they're all just pumping out the heat in every direction. Exactly. Yeah. I mean, look up at the ceiling. Yeah. Look how black it is. Yeah. You can just see this carbon being burned onto the ceiling. No There's way. a lot of health implications. Yeah. Over 4 million people die a year from indoor air pollution, from cooking over these types of sources of things. There's still three billion people in the world that cook on biomass. And the respiratory illnesses, I, the deaths from this are greater than TB and malaria combined. So this is a huge problem. But when you use an efficient stove, that's reduced. You yeah, can see this is a kind of commercial, obviously this is a food market here. So when you look at all of these stoves here, yeah. it kind of puts in perspective. And this is just a fraction, isn't it? It's just a small portion, but if you converted all of these inefficient stoves to efficient stoves, the savings you have just in this market alone would be huge. Our project here where we've distributed over 250,000 stoves, so far we've been able to calculate and uh, confirm emissions reductions of over a million tons of carbon. So what we're able to do is we're able to quantify these reductions in greenhouse gas emissions, and we're able to go through and calculate usage from all of these different stoves, and we're able to turn them these products called carbon credits, and these are sold on an open market. We then take the returns from those products, and we're able to invest them in this project, which allows us to subsidize the products and grow the project so it can reach more people. By enabling people to buy these efficient stoves who otherwise would not have been able to, Impact Carbon have created new energy savings known as additionalities. It's these additional savings that have a value. They're independently verified and are essential if the carbon credits are to keep their worth so that people actually buy them. As far as I understand, you're in the business of taking that thing that hasn't happened, all those emissions that haven't hit the atmosphere and all those trees that haven't been cut down, yeah. and you're turning them into a product. You're turning them into a tangible product. Yeah, it's, that work? it's a market. Unlike a market. a market here where, you're, where you're, it's, you're buying a product, and the product here is an emission reduction. Literally, uh, almost like a piece of paper saying, this is the amount of carbon exactly. not released into the air because of your product. Exactly. And, and who's, who's going to buy that? Who's going to buy that piece of paper? People who want to offset their, their jet emissions for flying around the world, the lights in their building, they're able to become a carbon neutral company. So people who are, in effect, creating more than their fair share yeah. of carbon. So for someone like me, um, who I, I have to do a lot of traveling for my job, I fear that my carbon footprint, the amount that I contribute to the atmosphere, is definitely more than my fair share. It's so high. Airfare is customer? one of them. Yeah. You can calculate your emissions from driving your car, from flying in a plane, from doing the things that you do that emit greenhouse gases, and you can offset it with a project like this here in Uganda. And what we're able to use is, is leverage this money created from selling carbon credits to make this project more sustainable, allow it to grow, and at the same time allow people to buy these at a reduced cost. Yuga Stove is one of five of Impact Carbon's partnering stove manufacturers and is by far the biggest. Its approach is bold and its trademark colors are loud and proud. These stoves are almost ready to hit the market. Thank you. Oh, I love that. That's great. But before they do, Rima's agreed to give me a go at the fun part. Uh, you're good to go now. All right, let's do it. Yeah. 
Yeah. Are you happy? Yeah, you've done it. Are you sure? You've done it. You've done it. So, it's worthy uh, of the logo. Yeah, that's our logo. And then it's ready for the market. Yeah, you've done a good job. Thank you very much. It looks all right, doesn't yeah, it? Yeah, it does. Okay. It's looking beautiful. It's worthy of the Yuga stove sticker. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, so we're going to get it to market. That's okay. Okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, wait, I've got this, your hat. Yeah. Thanks, man. All right, let's do it. All right. Since the civil war ended in 2008, Uganda has experienced robust economic growth, but still basic resources like electricity and gas are just too expensive for the average family or simply unavailable. So charcoal remains a lifeblood for Ugandans. The average household usage comprises 20% of their monthly expenditure. It's serious business. If you're going to introduce a new product to this market, not to mention a new way of thinking, you need to go the extra mile. So it's the last day in Uganda, we've caught up with the Yuga stove distribution vehicle. We're looking for Jumba and Dennis. I think that's Dennis on the mic. Dennis, can I come aboard? Yeah. Uganda stove manufacturers limited. At a reduced subsidized price. Hey man, so what's the plan today? You're gonna get going and sell some stuff? Exactly. All right, I'm I'm on board, man. Okay. All right. We're gonna go okay. Got okay. some flyers here as well. Environmental protection is everyone's responsibility, both environment and pocket friendly. That's what it says on the flyer. So you're trying to raise awareness as well. You're trying to spread the word about the environmental benefits of this kind of stuff? Exactly. Yeah. And uh, do you think, oh, wow, look at this. Can you make this out? Just come, just follow it. Wow, what was that? That's charcoal. That's a charcoal truck. Charcoal wow. Truck. This is marketing at its most direct. Last year, Yuga Stove sold almost 100,000 stoves, but despite these figures, they still have to work hard to make the sales. Even though there are long-term financial savings, old habits die hard, and the upfront cost can still put people off. I guess we just drive around, uh, we shout a lot about saving the environment and saving people money, and every now and again, pull over and try to shut the stores. We've got to hold on tight. Chicha more get up with I don't know what Jumba is saying on the mic, but it's definitely working. It's going off, it's a frenzy. These are 20,000. It's 20,000. But you're saving money and you're saving the environment. You want what? One five. He's asking, he wants to say one five. He's trying to barter with us. In all this excitement, at some point, I seem to have forgotten my journalistic impartiality. He's the boss. Woo! Hot. So can I ask you, Sita, what, um, why are you here today? Why are you buying a yoga stove? So you make Instead it, of buying charcoal for 2000 I can use maybe something for 1000 or 500 which is, that's really big saving. And I understand that maybe there's a problem with a lot of deforestation? Cutting off the trees, actually, it's bad. Actually, me personally, it's a profit. So that's interesting, Dennis. At the end of the day, you know, the environmental benefits of this, it, does, it, it, it maybe can come second, but the environmental benefits are still there. But for you, it's a financial saving. Great. Well, which one are you going to be buying today? We are buying a Dalmatian. This one? The small one? Yeah. OK. Yeah. It's very heavy. Be careful. So next one, another one here. So be careful. Okay, can I give you one? It's this lady. This lady. 
Enjoy your new stove. Okay, so Dennis, that was pretty exciting. How many stoves do you think we sold there? Uh, right here, we sold uh, 17 pieces. 17? The small ones. Wow, okay. Yeah. And are you happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. I guess every sale that goes out there, that's helping to spread the word, yeah? Exactly. We have a motto that says environmental protection is everyone's responsibility. So my responsibility is to bring the stove to them. Then their responsibility is to buy the stove and then go and use it. Hi, I'm, I'm Russell. Hi. Hi. Ah, is, this, is this yours? What are you cooking here? Can we see? Just cooking bananas. We call them matoke. Matoke, yeah. in here? Yeah. It's good? <laughs> yeah. It's tasty? <laughs> Can you tell me, um, why did you buy the stove this afternoon? Uh, I was a racho nguze sigiriero. Nguze sigiriero, kubensa nyusiza nungi. I understand maybe uh, for some people the stove is very expensive, but maybe there is some help? Hey, mweba le nyo mweba lire dala, okutu salira kusigiri. That's why she's thanking that. Thank you so much. I am very intrigued about what you're cooking here. Um, about what did you call it? matoke? I would love to try it, but also um, Chu, our sound recorder, is very hungry. Uh. Can we taste it? Can we try? it? <laughs> <laughs> She's saying it doesn't have sauce. Will you take it without the sauce? Yeah, just plain. Just plain. Okay. 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 So it looks like we've just invited ourselves for dinner, um, but I'm intrigued to, to try this matoke and uh, to see the stove in action. Come on in. Come and join for eating. Come on. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at this. This is sauce. Okay, so it looks like it's turning into a proper dinner party. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, do you know anything about this, uh, the yoga stove? Yeah. It's good, can cook good. Within 30 minutes. Within 30 minutes. Yeah. It's extra quick. It's ready. Yeah, okay. It is very good. So what about this idea that maybe um, you're cutting down less trees? Oh, trees. Yeah, because we saw some guys making yeah, charcoal. This way is the environment. Yeah. To, to catch the trees. Yeah? It is this way the environment. So if you use that stuff, you can they can cut small trees. And so. It makes good environment and gives us clouds, good clouds, rain, like that. <laughs> it's all connected, isn't it? Yeah, the food is ready. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> Can we try? <laughs> okay, so... Okay. Okay. So sweet. Like this sauce. Okay, it's good. Mm, it's very good. Very good, Laughing going on. I just wonder whether like, we're married or something now. So, um, how do you say delicious in Uganda? Nyo 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 chikapka. I don't know if my pronunciation is quite right. Chikapuka. 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 By the end of the day, we sold 35 stoves bringing potential annual carbon emission reductions of more than 90 tonnes. It's a start and the environmental message is getting through, but Yuga Stove still has a long road ahead. There they are. As soon as she sniffed the forest, she started waking up. Smelling home. Yeah, they know the smell of the forest. They know where they want to be.